Alright, welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be redoing my whole computer setup because I just bought myself two 4K monitors. So my goal is to implement those into my setup. Now my setup is kind of oddball because basically I have three monitors, but only the middle one is actually connected to my main PC. The other two are actually connected to their own Raspberry Pis. And then I use a program called Synergy where the cursor can kind of go across both. And the reason I did that is because with a triple monitor setup, the middle one is a primary, or at least that's what makes the most sense. And a lot of programs, when you open, say, a dialogue or anything, it goes wherever it wants and it's really irritating. And usually what ends up happening is it goes on the first monitor instead of the primary. So every time you open, say, the save and open dialogue, for example, in the program, it'll go on the wrong monitor instead of the one you're actually working on. So it's really annoying. So with the Raspberry Pi, it kind of, everything is stuck on its own monitor. Because the side monitors are mostly just to like, say I want to compile code and I want to see the error. So that's on one side and then I want to do something else on the other side. And then my actual work is in the middle. Well, I'm going to change this a little bit. My goal is to have the two 4K monitors. One 4K monitor is equivalent to four HD monitors in terms of how much room you have. So originally I was going to get like a 32 inch 4K but they're freaking expensive, they're like over a grand. So for the same price as one 32 inch, I was able to get two 28 inch. And 28 inch, uh, like this monitor here, like the, the center one, that is, I believe it's a 24. So I'm actually gonna have like four extra inches and it'll be 4K. So I think it'll be okay. Like I think I'll be able to see the text and everything should be okay. At work, we have three 4K monitors that are 27 inch. And we need, I need that for my job because of all the stuff we need. And then that's the other thing, I will be working from home soon. That's kind of what prompted me to buy the 4K monitors because they want us to work from home on eight hour shifts, but on 12 hour shifts, they want at least one person in the office. So that means dragging stuff back and forth, it's kind of a pain. So instead of dragging my monitors back and forth, I'm gonna leave all my setup at work the way it is. I'm not gonna touch it. And then at home, I'm just gonna make do with two 4Ks instead of three. Having to work from home, which is going to be awesome by the way, I can't wait. Like it'll be kind of cool to be able to get up, shower, and just stay home to work. That would be pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, so having to work from home kind of prompted me to buy these monitors just to make my life easier. And I had been wanting to do that for a while anyway. I was just waiting for them to come down in price and they weren't. So I kind of took this opportunity. But yeah, so another thing that's really different with this setup is that my computers are not actually here like under here and that's a huge mess under there by the way I don't want to fix all that but yeah so my computers are not actually under here because I do have two computers one for gaming and then one for everything else because I run Linux and I just I didn't have room for two computers here like it was just I just didn't it was just impractical so I have really long cables I go down to the, my server room and then the two machines are in my rack now the issue with that is my KVM and all that stuff is in the basement too. So if I want to incorporate my work PC here, then yeah, see, it gets kind of challenging. So what I want to do is redo all this cabling completely from scratch. Like I'm actually going to pull everything out. And I also want to move the KVM upstairs. That way with my work PC, I can keep it here because I still have to plug in my headset and all that stuff. So it'll be easier to just keep the work PC here. I'm probably going to lay it on this desk over here. So yeah, so I haven't decided exactly like like if I'm gonna keep a 1K monitor as primary and then two 4Ks as secondary, you know, for my own setup, I haven't decided that yet. So I'll kind of play it by ear and and play and see what works out better. But anyway, so yeah, so all this cabling, it's a big mess. I just need to redo it all from scratch. And then I'll probably like tuck it under the rack somewhere, like in the basement instead of here. And then I also have this this shelving unit that I used to use way back in the day before I even had a server rack. My server is used to be on top of that. But what I'll do is I'll place that under there and I'm, I'm gonna put all this stuff on top. 
just to get all the cables off the ground all that because it like they collect dust buddies and stuff and you can't really vacuum it because like it, i don't know it's, it's just a mess so i just want to redo it and then this this is what it looks like from the basement so the cables all come down here they come out here so see that part actually doesn't look too bad and then they come down here and then bang just look at that huge mess yeah so this could be a pretty big undertaking but it has to be done so i'm gonna start now yeah so i think i'll get started here first i'll just unplug everything take any cables i can put them aside and then i'll go in the basement i'll do the same thing and then at that point i'll decide if i want to actually take the cables out completely or just try to relabel them because basically what happens is all the labels fell off so i don't even know what's what because i got a label maker i made labels but then over time they just they got unstuck or whatever so i don't even know what's what so yeah so get started with that I just found a Kinder Surprise egg. These things are actually legal in the States. You get caught trying to cross the border with these things, like they'll seriously detain you. It's pretty serious business. Found the toy that goes with the Kinder Surprise. And an M&M. crazy all the adapters too. I probably should have labeled these at some point because I'm gonna have a lot of fun trying to figure out what goes with what. I mean usually you can go by a voltage. That's assuming they even put the voltage on the device. Found a peanut. Uh, I'd say that's about 2012, 2013 maybe. Hard to tell. All right, so all of these cables are actually cables that go down to the basement. So you can see why this was a mess. This is all, like all the slack. I don't need that much slack. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure out the best way to deal with the slack. Cause no matter what, it has to go somewhere. So it's either the rack in the basement is gonna be a huge mess or I'm just gonna try and make the mess here look better. I kind of need to figure out the best approach. And I think with this thing over here, I'll be able to kind of like organize it better. Maybe because I shoved it like right inside or something like, I'm gonna have to figure something out. But yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect everything from the basement and then I'll be able to just pull the cables from here. Cause there seems to be more slack on this side than there is in the basement. Wow, I don't even know where to start. 
I think I'll just disconnect everything and go from there. So this KVM is actually going to go upstairs. So that'll be at least one less thing in the rack. The soundboard here is going to have to stay. But what I might actually do is have two fiber optic cables going up and then if I do that, I'll be able to just move this upstairs too. Because the fiber optic cables are needed because those long cables, I was catching all sorts of interference. And to be honest, I still catch a lot of interference just because there's a lot of interconnects between. So yeah, that's the thing with two PCs, the sound gets kind of complicated because you need to try to combine the sound from two PCs into one set of speakers. Yeah, so I'll, this was the best way I was able to do it. I'm surprised there's not already a solution for that, to be honest. Alright, so I stopped doing the time lapse because I don't think you can see much anyway. It was kind of claustrophobic behind there and I couldn't really get a good shot anyway, so I'm just gonna show some snippets as we go along. So, right now, most of the cables are out. So, this is all the cables going upstairs. I'm getting ready to kind of sort them out and I'm gonna pull them up from, from the top. And this is what it looks like now behind the rack. It's much cleaner. So now I'm kind of debating where I'm going to coil all the excess. I mean, I could kind of shove it down there again, but then like it was full of spiders and spider webs in there and it gets pretty messy. So like, I don't know if I want to do that again. I kind of want to keep this area clean, but if I don't put it down here, then I have to figure out where I put it upstairs. So it's going to be catch 22, right? So I have to figure out what I want to do. There's still a little bit of cleanup I could do here. Like I got a power bar that comes from a UPS. I kind of need to decide if I want to keep it that way or not. And a little stuff like that. I've got a bit of Ethernet cleanup to do. I'm not too worried about cleaning this stuff up yet. Like eventually I will do all this. I mean, these are actually organizers. So like it's normal to have all these cables here. Like that's, that's what this is designed for. It might not look good, but it's to just kind of keep the slack. Like that's what it's made for, right? So like at some point if I put covers, it might look nicer. And it's actually something I can do at some point. It won't be too hard. Actually, I could probably put some covers, maybe even magnetic. It could go on screws or something. That's a, that's a project for later. Like this stuff here could be improved too. And then this is all the stuff that some of it will go back in there. But like that KVM and all that's gonna go upstairs. So I'm gonna organize all that. Tons of adapters. Like some of them were not even used for everything. That's a shelf over there that I bought. Originally, I was gonna put it here. But then I realized that if I put it there, I actually lose the ability to put anything at the bottom. Like I'm basically losing space. So the shelf is kind of pointless. So like, I'm gonna keep it for something else. Like maybe even in the other rack or something. I'll find a use for it. But yeah, so now, I'm just gonna need to go upstairs and then just start pulling these cables out. And then these big DVI cables, like they're pretty big, right? So they're very bulky. And I don't remember how much I paid for these. I probably paid quite a lot actually at the time. But like these like cables, some of these are USB and some of these are HDMI. I think, I think these are the HDMI actually. Does it say? Yeah, see, did, yeah, so like HDMI cables are much thinner. So like I'm better off sticking with HDMI and just forgetting about DVI. 
But at the time, VDI was kind of what I decided to go with, I guess. So yeah, HDMI is going to be way better, much thinner cables. One for the gaming machine, which is going to be single monitor. And then two for my main machine, which will be dual monitor. I'll put the two 4Ks on there. And then I'll probably have two of the normal monitors for with the Raspberry Pi as well. I may as well keep using them. But I'm kind of undecided on that yet. But yeah, so I'm going to start pulling these cables out. All right, so all the cables are pulled right out. So this is all the cables that were going down the basement. They're all shoved in here, so I have to kind of... I still need to organize these. The big DVI cables are going out. And then I think what I'm going to do is all the small cables, I'm kind of going to bundle them into like kind of like a snake. Kind of like what they do in like professional audio. And then I'm still going to label each one. Like you can see like all the labels here, like they've been falling off. So it's kind of a pain. Like some of them you can still see what the label is. Like that used to be white, but the like part of it just fell off. Like I don't know, it's just it's kind of it kind of sucks that I did that, but and then a lot of them they just fell off completely. So I can tell what's what. So this is one of the reasons I'm doing this. Is you can see here that's the hole where everything goes through. So yeah, so now I'm gonna start sorting through all these, and then like I need to clean the dust bunnies. Like check that out, it's pretty gross. So I need to like vacuum all this as well. So yeah, so I'm going to start putting labels. For the labeling, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use electrical tape. I'm just going to wrap it around real good. Now, even electrical tape, after a while, I find it starts to fall off. But I figure if I do the electrical tape and I do the label maker, hopefully those are going to, at least one of those should stay, hopefully. So yeah, so I'm going to do that off camera and get back. All right, so this is where I stand. And this is taking quite a lot of time, but this is what it looks like under the desk. So the idea here is I want I want to avoid any cables touching the ground. It just makes vacuuming easier if everything's off the ground and it'll just look cleaner. So all the cables will be kind of shoved in there. I'm gonna try and make it look as good as I can. And my custom power bar is there, the UPS is there. Power wise, everything is pretty much ready. And then up here, of course, I've just kind of been using that as a workbench while I'm going along. Still need to decide like what to do for the monitors. But using a lot of these uh, velcro straps to kind of organize the cables and this is where I stand as far as the cable that goes in the basement goes so i sorted everything out i labeled everything and i made kind of basically like a snake and then that's some usbs and then that's more and then that's everything else so i got more usbs there actually oh right yeah there's a i found this 25 footer that i wasn't using so i kind of added that to the bunch Got two HDMI, I'm gonna need a third one. I got a Toslink audio and two regular audio for the mic. So yeah, so this is it. Now originally when I bought these, I kind of guesstimated how much I would need. So I bought like 25 footers. <coughs> don't worry, I don't have COVID-19. I'm not sure what I'll do with those. I might store them somewhere and never know. Or try to sell them. Yeah, so anyway, so what happened is the first time I did this, I, I figured I would need the 25 feet, but it turns out I only need like 15. So really like, there's gonna be a lot of slack because like basically from over there to there ends up actually being long enough. So all of this is gonna be slack. And I decided what I'm gonna do, because there's no DVI cables, it's actually not that bulky. So what I'm gonna end up doing, I'm just gonna coil it and I'm just gonna shove it under the server rack. I mean, it won't be too bad, so. Yeah, so I'm gonna get started on that. All right, so it's a little bit past midnight right now, so this took way longer than I thought, but I'm getting there. Like, yeah, so it's not the best job, but the idea is I just wanted everything contained. Like you can see there's like hardly anything on the ground. I mean, I'm not done right there. What I did here is I actually uh, drilled these holes and I put bolts through. And then that way I can actually put the cables on top of the bolts. I mean, it's a little bit Mickey Mouse, but at least it keeps everything off the floor. I mean, I still need to organize that a little bit. And then you can see how cleanly it goes into the basement. I'll put a plastic bag in there just to block you no know, spiders and stuff from coming up. But yes, yeah, so it's it's much cleaner. Try to see if you, I mean, obviously it's not the best job, but my goal isn't to make it like super nice because I'm always kind of tinkering around, changing stuff around. So I, I just wanted something that it's easier to manage. And by having the KVM here, it means when I connect my work PC, I can connect it to the KVM here. And then I'll have a headset and all that. So it's easier to have the work PC up here. And then when I put the Raspberry Pis, it'll be the same thing. I'm just gonna put them here. So, so 
basically the point of this was to clean some stuff up, but also to make it easier to kind of manage my new setup. So that's just like one of my existing monitors. Uh, I'll do the 4K ones tomorrow. Now I realized that on my PC, I only have one HDMI port. Did my clients have dual 4K off that motherboard? Uh, might not happen. I'm gonna experiment with some uh, DVI converters, but I don't think that's gonna work. And this is how it looks in the basement. So you can see there's way less cables, not as thick, it's not as bulky. It's coming down here. It's very claustrophobic down here. And then I was a little short on some of the shorter cables just because of the way I organized it. So I kind of had to make it go like that. But you know, I'm not too fussy to be honest. Like this isn't the best job. I mean, obviously I could clean this up a little bit more. I'm not quite done. But this is, I mean, this is cleaner than what it was. I mean, it's easier to manage. They're labeled. That, that's the biggest thing for me that they're labeled. I don't really care if it's a mess as long as they're labeled so I know what's what. That was the biggest thing. That was my pet peeve with this whole setup. So all the labels fell off. So it kind of sucked. Yeah, so I'm getting tired. I'm going to head to bed and I'm going to try to get up early tomorrow because I might have some packages coming in as well. And I'm kind of bummed out. I thought my machine was able to do two 4K monitors, but it looks like it won't only do one. So I'll have to figure out what to do. I don't really want to put a GPU in that machine. Because the whole idea of that machine is I wanted it to be like low power usage. And the minute you put a GPU in a machine, you're adding like 200 watts right off the bat. So I don't really want to do that. But worst case scenario, maybe I'll just do that, I guess. Alright, so it, right now it's the next day. Uh, I did a little bit of cleanup off camera, but basically today my main priority is to get my work PC actually set up to make sure that it works, like that I can get everything working. Because starting tomorrow I'll actually be working from home. I've never actually gotten to work from home before, so I think that's going to be kind of neat. Like the whole idea of being able to get up, shower, and just hop on my PC and be working. I don't have to go anywhere, I don't have to take snow off the car, I don't have to do anything, I could just start working. I'm going to save on gas too. I mean, the gas here is like super cheap now. It's like 89 cents a liter the last time I checked. Like, I don't think I've ever seen it get that low since like before 9-11. So it's pretty crazy. Like all the stuff going on in the world right now, it's just pretty crazy. So yeah, so I'm going to show you what I got done so far. So I got one of my monitors set up as the primary right now. This is just like one of my old monitors. And then my work PC is right here. So my work PC has basically two display ports and then it has a video card which has a DVI and a VGA. And there's also HDMI. I think only one of those can be used at once. I don't remember. It's like, it's just a cheap video card. It's not like a super fancy one. Cause there's only, you can't really put a good video card in these PCs because they're like the slim factor ones. Like there's not even a fan on it. So there's different ways I can do that. I might use a two display ports, which go to HDMI. So one of them might be going to the main monitor and then I'm probably gonna have the other monitor on the side. And then I'm just gonna have a dual monitor set up. And then for my main, like my personal PC, I'll kind of do the same, except for now I'm just gonna have a single monitor and then I'll just KVM between the two. Like I already do that on my gaming machine. So the big thing today to find out is whether or not the 4K monitor will even work with my setup. I'm kind of worried that something along the lines doesn't support 4K, like the cables or even the video card in my PC so I'm just kind of worried that something won't work. So I'm going to test this right now and unbox the new monitor and basically hope for the best because I got myself two 4Ks. So I'm going to unbox one of them and hook it up as my main. And then I'll make sure that the work PC and all my gaming PC, all that works. If by chance it doesn't work, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set them up with the work PC because that was kind of the reason I bought them. So I'm going to get the work PC set up with the two 4K monitors. And once that's going, at least I'll have that. Without further ado, I'm gonna start by unboxing it and basically just swapping it with that monitor and basically see what happens. So 
So this is an Asus Tough Gaming VG289 and it's a 28 inch monitor and I paid around 400 and something, I don't remember the exact price, which is actually pretty good because I originally wanted a 32 inch, but a single 32 inch monitor 4K is like over a thousand bucks. So this, two of these was actually cheaper than one 32 inch. So I just hope that it won't be too small for my eyes, but I think it'll be fine. And I mean, worst case scenario can always get a 32 inch later on. Maybe at some point they'll go down price. I've been waiting for like three years now. And I mean, they're giving away the 4K TVs. I don't know why the monitors are so expensive. Another option is to wait for the 8K TVs to go down and I can just put like a 55 inch on the wall. That'll be equivalent to like, I don't know, 16 monitors, I think. So yeah, that would be pretty crazy. I'm kind of hoping this comes with HDMI cables. Okay, I prefer monitors that take like a regular power cable in and not like a proprietary adapter. But yeah, that's too bad. Oh well. Now the bracket, the power cable, which is like, it's not really proprietary, it's just that these are not really that common. So like you don't tend to have them lying around, so that's not too bad. Oh, is this HDMI? Oh good, and it comes with HDMI. This is great because I thought I had spare HDMI cables. For some reason, all the HDMI ones I have, they're like the mini HDMI, which they're useless for me. Like, I don't have anything that takes them. I don't even know why I bought them. All right, so I'll set this stuff aside. Yeah, so I'm really happy to see there's HDMI cables in here because I have an order coming from Prime Cables, but it's hard to complain given what's going on in the world right now, but they haven't even shipped it out yet. Like it's not even on the way. So who knows how long that'll be. Some kind of stand, I believe. I think that's what it's in there. Okay, so I probably have to take out everything, I think, in one shot. Okay, so I'll flip this over. It's gotta be an easier way of doing this, so. Yeah, I guess I have to flip it over. I just hope it doesn't try to open like when this comes off. I feel this is like the wrong way of doing it. At least if something catastrophic happens, it'll be on camera, so there's that. All right. That's a stand. Oh, nice and heavy. I find a lot of monitors now that the stands are really like flimsy, but this actually feels really good. And there it is. Wow, that is huge. Nice. Yeah, so here it is. I'm gonna put down the stand. Yeah, this is a nice stand. I really like it. Yeah, so you basically bring it about here and you can screw it from the bottom. All right. So yeah, so it's actually hard to find monitors that have a swivel like that. So this is nice that these have it because if it doesn't end up working as my primary, what I'll do is I'll put one here and then one here, and then I'll have the regular like HD one and I'll have two 4Ks on the side. Yeah, this is nice. I guess it doesn't go, oh, it does go up and down. Look at that. Oh, this is actually really nice. Nice, I really like this. No, because I find most of the time the monitor stands now they're like garbage, but this is actually a really good one. And it also turns like right on the stand itself. So like this can stay on the table. Like, 
even if you want to bolt it in for some reason, it's plastic, I probably wouldn't drill into this, but if you want, actually there's metal in there too. I probably wouldn't, but if you wanted to, you can still turn it like that. Like, yeah, I really like this stand. So yeah, so I'm gonna attempt to use it as my main. Actually, let's see what kind of inputs are behind here. I didn't I'm getting a I'm getting all excited for the stand more than the monitor. So let's see what we got here. So we got two HDMI, one display port. And then oh it looks like there's there's a headphone jack, so I guess there's speakers built in. And then there's the DC jack, so yeah, it's pretty standard inputs. I mean, nothing too exciting, but I probably wouldn't expect DVI. Actually, DVI can't do 4K, so yeah, there would be a reason to have DVI on here anyway. And here's the money shots right here. Oh yeah. I'm legit excited at this. I just hope everything works out when I plug it in. Now for the moment of truth. Oh, it's on. Okay, I probably set, have to set the input. Or it might auto detect. I hope this works. It does. This is awesome. So I have, I have 4K monitor in Linux, just like that. This is great. This is awesome and it actually looks good. Now from my understanding, if the HDMI cable is not the proper kind, I think it still works, but it just drops the refresh rate. So like, I don't know, maybe the refresh rate is not that good. I don't know. And this is hard to tell, like, I don't really have anything to compare this to, so I don't know how normal this is. It doesn't bother me. I would have to like start watching videos and stuff just to see. I can't do this here because I'll get copyrighted. But yeah, so, oh, this is interesting. So I have Synergy installed. So like it's, I have those two Raspberry Pi monitors that are not plugged in anywhere. So when my cursor goes to the end, it actually reappears here because this is where the monitor would have ended normally. Like a HD monitor is basically a quarter of a 4K. So this is like having four monitors. So like this is, like when I'm gonna be like coding and stuff, like this is gonna be awesome. Actually, I can open the script right now. Or I can try at least. I don't know why it's not opening. Okay, this is weird. Oh okay, yeah, I don't know what that was about. Okay. Yeah, like just look at everything you can see. Like it's crazy. Like like normally like it would end here. Like mind you, like if I'm gonna be spending a lot of time coding like this oh, okay, so my cursor goes back over there. That's because of synergy, I could probably turn that off. I would have to like reconfigure that if I want to use it again. Okay, yeah, that's better. Yeah, that was just synergy, I could probably reconfigure that. Yeah, so my cursor, I don't even know how well you're seeing this, so I should probably move the camera better. Yeah, so normally like with a HD monitor, it would end about here because of like, this is like having four HD monitors. That's basically what the 4K is. I'm just so excited. Like, I can't believe this just worked right out of the box. Now I should probably check my gaming machine. I don't know if that'll pick it up or I might have to change the settings in Windows. It's thinking. Cool, so I just picked it up right away. I'm actually surprised. Like I figured I would have at least had to like configure it or something, but yeah, it just works. 
So my goal here, I'm kind of going off topic. I'm just getting so excited. I can't believe this is like working. Like, I don't know. I just had a feeling I was going to run into that kind of weird issue, but I'm not. So like, this is awesome. I'm going to turn on my work computer because I want to see if it'll pick it up properly. At this point, I'm just like expecting to run into a problem. That's just the kind of luck I have with this stuff. And like so far, everything works. So like, I'm kind of curious to try gaming. Oh, Minecraft on here would be actually pretty awesome. Oh, of course, that's the update. This is what being a true gamer is. You buy like a $400 monitor and like the best video card you can find so you can play Minecraft. No, but seriously, I don't really play a lot of games. Like Minecraft is one of them. I play Unreal Tournament sometimes. I start playing No Man's Sky. Like I do play games, but I'm not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't exactly be what people would call a gamer. It's kind of something I do once in a while. All right. Actually, I don't even think this is running at 4K. Oh, this is actually kind of terrible. Ah, uh, it's not too bad. I think it was just preload like... Not that Minecraft is exactly the best benchmark to use, but... Yeah, I'm kind of curious to see if it's actually running at 4K or not. Oh, right, my work PC. I just want to check if that came up. Uh, I don't think that's 4K. No, that's definitely not 4K. Yeah, that's not 4K. But you know what? It's actually good because I was kind of curious to see what does it look like if you're not 4K. And it actually looks good. Like it looks like a, a regular monitor. All right, let's see if I can change this. Okay, so that's not good. I don't know why it's not letting me go further. That kind of sucks, actually. Yeah, that's not good. I wonder if it's because of the adapter. Because I'm using DisplayPort to 4K. Adapter, uh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, that's really too bad. So plan B, as long as I have to work from home, I'm not going to use this as my main monitor. And I think what I'm going to do is just put them on the sides and then put back the other monitor. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Let's try this again. Yeah, so I think it has to do with the, the adapters. So what I'll have to do is get the display port cables from work. But then if I do it that way, I won't really be... I mean, I could sort of use it as my main because I can just switch the inputs around. But like while I'm working, I don't want to have to keep switching the inputs. So yeah, I think for now, these will be dedicated for work until I get back to a point where I'm not working from home anymore. But yeah, this kind of sucks. I was really hoping for this to work. So I'm going to finish setting this up off camera and then show you the result after. Oh, uh -huh. 
All right, so I kind of got carried away there. I had to try gaming. So yeah, so for now I'm gonna have to put those monitors at, on the sides and use the DisplayPort cables because I couldn't get it to work with the Office PC. So at least I know it works with my PC. That's that's really what matters. As long as it works with my PC, I'm happy. So while I'm working at home, I just won't get to enjoy them for my own personal stuff, but that's fine. At least I know they work. And I'm still waiting for an HDMI cable so I can even have the two monitors going anyway. So. Yeah, it's, it's gonna work out. Okay, so it turns out those HDMI cables that I thought came with it, it's actually DisplayPort cables and not HDMI, which in a way actually works out for me because I need DisplayPort cables for it to work for my work computer because for whatever reason, DisplayPort to HDMI adapters are not converting to 4K. I guess they just don't support it. So as far as working from home goes, I'm pretty much all set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the other monitor on this side and then I'm gonna have a triple monitor set up on my work PC and then I might even put like another monitor off to the side because there's some applications I can kind of shove to another HD monitor. And then I should be able to watch pretty much almost all the stuff we watch at work. I'm still happy. I'm happy it actually works. That's what I'm the most happy about. At least I know that when it, if things go back to normal and that I don't have to work from home anymore, then I can kind of redo my setup. So this setup in this video is going to be pretty much for working from home. And once all my stuff from Prime Cables comes in at some point, then I'm kind of going to redo the setup. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. So, so yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and install the other monitor. Well, here's a first world problem. When you have too many monitors and you don't have enough room for your mouse pad, I'll be able to fix that once I get those monitor arms though. So it turns out I forgot to turn on the mic and I recorded like five minutes worth of stuff. Anyway, I was kind of rambling on anyway, so. Anyway, so yeah, so this is the setup right now. So I'm pretty happy with it. And then the cables here are decently organized. I mean, my goal here wasn't to like make them super well organized or it looks super tidy. My goal was to mostly take them off the ground. And I mean, you saw what it was before. This is still better. And then my goal is to also make it easy enough to modify stuff. I mean, I'm always like changing stuff around and all that. So the more you organize the cables, the harder it is to manage. So like, I mean, yeah, I could probably make a better job under there. That's where all the stuff from downstairs comes in. I could probably do a better job with that. But also, at some point, I want to build a, a new desk. So there's no point in making it too nice because I'm going to be dismantling all this at some point anyway. But anyway, so this video was probably long enough as is. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that and have a good one. Bye.